What's up, Explorers? I'm Jeff from the Cloud Explorers. And welcome back to the Microsoft AI Advent Calendar, the Winter Party Exploration Series. We, it's time to unbox number 18. Drum rolls. Ta-da! <coughs> so, for today's uh, episode, we're going to talk about protect your data at rest. Um, and let's just jump in and discover together what that means and how to do this. Well, as usually, Microsoft has a quite decent article on learn.microsoft.com about the Azure OpenAI service. <clears throat> and one of the articles is encrypt your data at rest. So this article talks about how to do this, explains about it. I'm not gonna read the whole article for you. You can find the link down below. And the article goes into how to do this through the portal. So first we're gonna have a short talk about what the encryption means, and then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it as infrastructure as code. Let's jump in first. What do we mean with data encryption um, and why do we need it? Well, simply said, we're gonna explore the encryption options and the encryption options are visible over here so it's literally called encryption by default as you can see uh, the microsoft manage key is used in any of the subscriptions and with uh, this option you can uh, select the customer manage keys or the uh, so-called bring your own key and this option provides a greater flexibility to create rotate disable and revoke access control which should meet your organizational security needs if your security needs uh, require for this, depending, I guess, on your data classifications that, uh, uh, of the data that goes, that is used by the, the, your instance of, of Azure Open AI service. Um, and speaking on data, what, what are we encrypting here? Well, based on the documentation, what I can see is we're encrypting training data, result files, and fine-tuned models. Um, encrypting them is one thing. There's also the option to remove encryption later on or delete the key, and that also has some impact. So let's have a look at that. Uh, as you can see here, important. Revoking the uh, access to an active uh, a customer managed key uh, will uh, wh while it is still enabled, will prevent downloading of training data, results, etc., and deploying fine-tuned models. So basically, it will prevent you to use them uh, to download any of the data, to take the data with you. However, using is not uh, revoked, as this is what you can see he mentioned here. However, previous deployed fine-tuned models will continue to operate and serve traffic until those deployments are deleted. So. If you're going to revoke access um, and you want to make sure that that data is cannot be used anymore, uh, you must also delete the models. Uh, otherwise, you could they will continue to function. Okay, that said, let's jump in and see how we can do this through Bicep. And for this, I have um, <clears throat> extended the setup that we've been using so far. Uh, let's open it up. The starter kit for Microsoft AI service. And as you can see here, that's what I was going for. There's an additional key vault now. So we're going to use this 007 instance here. And we're going to, uh, the first key vault I already used in the previous episodes to store some secure data like search uh, keys, uh, keys to storage accounts, but also the API key from Azure Open AI service. And I don't want to mix those two because I consider the um, encryption key more of a backend key and the um, keys that I just mentioned more of a front end key setup. So I want to make sure I split them. Also, in case I want to use a different SKU for key vaults, you're gonna need to sp uh, skip them uh, so split them anyway because you there if you don't have the requirement to use a higher SKU. Uh, like a HSM backed key vault for all your keys, 
just use them for the keys that you need to. So separate them out. It's gonna be more cost effective and it's gonna be a better least privileged uh, scenario uh, and a separation of duties in this case. So jumping back to the bicep, um, as you can see, there's a separate key vault for the, for the managed keys. So how do I access that key vault? Because what's gonna happen is my, my Microsoft Azure AI service is gonna reach out to that key to grab the key and start using it to encrypt the data. And that's what we see here. We say, select the customer managed key, select a key vault, not a URI, and then you have to select a key vault, a uh, key, and a version. And this is very important. The version is an um, important uh, field because a version is used for rotating keys as well. So when you rotate key based um, uh, on a policy in Key Vault, you also need to push your Azure OpenAI service to use that latest rotated key as well. Um, so before we can, uh, well, obviously first we needed the Key Vault that I talked about. And a second, we need a identity. In this case, it's gonna be a managed identity to reach out and grab that encryption key there. So first thing to start with is extending the Microsoft Cognitive Services Deploy Bicep and simply assigning a managed identity. And that can be done in, in, in three, literally three lines of code. If you're gonna use a system assigned one, it's literally identity type system assigned, you're done. Um, and we can see that in the service itself, there should be somewhere identity, there we go. So here you can see my uh, identity and any kind of role assignment that is, that is used. Um, after we deploy a key vault with the system, uh, sorry, after we deploy the cognitive service with the system assigned uh, identity, that identity needs permissions to uh, the key vault in, in question. So how do we do that? Well, for that, I extended the controller and the controller is now referencing an existing resource. Let's see here, existing data encryption vault. And that data encryption vault is referenced with a data based on its um, vault name. And this existing resource is then used uh, to create a, a service policy uh, or an access policy, actually a key vault access policy where we set the unwrap, wrap and get for the key. Um, and, the per and here we provide the permissions, uh, the object ID or the principal ID to whom we provide the permissions. And you can see the existing cognitive service dot identity dot principal ID. So this results in, um, the correct permissions for our cognitive service um, in this case. And one thing that makes the key vault slightly different than a regular key vault is that we need the actual key to be created as well. And that happens in the data decryption, uh, data encryption uh, controller, which I created separately. Very, very basic. We're reusing the key vault mo module here uh, provided the name and a resource location as from the previous key vault. So we're simply uh, building on top of the uh, standard module that we have. Um, then I'm referencing it as an existing resource and adding the um, uh, a AOI data encryption key to that key vault. So you were wondering maybe why am I referencing it after just deploying it here? Well, remember, this is not the same script. This is the controller. I'm actually using a module here. And the only way of passing any other way of passing uh, secrets and, and values uh, from the module to the controller in this case is to through output by outputting the files, which is not considered really safe. So the only other remaining option right now, as long as the output type resource is not enabled, um, which is a preview feature, by the way, if you don't know in Key Vault, and I'm not sure, or oh, oh, in Key Vault, in Bicep. Um, as long as that option is not uh, GA, the only proper way of uh, pro, uh, passing secrets 
uh, from a module to the controller and consuming it there or to, to a different module is by referencing the, uh, the, the resource by name with the existing, it gets the resource object. And here I can then um, actually use uh, that resource uh, to create the encryption key. And we provide, we give it a, a size and a type, and we make sure it is enabled. So if we would go back to the key vault in question, uh, so let's have a look, key vault two, keys, hopefully I have access to it. Yeah, here you see the data encryption key, as you can see, I've played around with it a little bit. Current version and the whole thing um, that's required. So after this key is created, this is then again uh, referenced by uh, the uh, Azure uh, AI service, uh, which already has access policy. And if we scroll all the way up, the cognitive service is actually using the key vault name, the key version, and the key vault URI to <clears throat> um, create, uh, encrypt all the data. Well, actually, like I said, the training data, the result files and the fine tune models for us. And after we run this, so I've already deployed the key vault. So we have now a two stage deployment. First, we need to make sure that the key vault, the data encryption key vault is deployed with the key in it that's already present so there's no point in running this and then it's just running the actual starter kit controller which should go through all the whole thing um, provide itself access to the key vault with the correct policy and then retrieve the key vault name uh, key uh, uri and key version and let's see how it's it shouldn't take long as the whole thing should be deployed in a couple of minutes. Let's see in the meantime, go back and have a look. I think it should be deployed by now. And end result should look like this. So we have the customer manage key selected um, we have the uh, current key uh, URI and we have the current key version. And there's the option of actually changing the key where we can say, hey, this is, um, this is a new key. And I believe this is also the option to rotate the key as well. So if we provide the same uh, key URI, um, Let's see, we can select a, a newer version and we rotate the key in key vault. And then we need to make sure that we also uh, provide the new version of the key here and rotate it. And let's double check. Yeah, the whole thing is deployed indeed, like we just saw. And that's pretty much it with regards to um, uh, protecting your data at rest in Azure OpenAI service. So if you want to see more on Microsoft AI, check out my previous episodes. Um, subscribe not to miss the new one, obviously. If you didn't like this episode, download the shit out of it. And if you did, please thumbs up. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.